Yes, you guys, welcome back. I've got three big stories for you guys to break down. Hear the latest news surrounding Tomori and his long move to AC Milan. I'm going to be talking about Olivia Giroud and interest coming out from Real Madrid. And I'm going to speak about a young South Korean centre-back monster. The club are looking to rival Spurs with the sign. So again, we've got another banger of a new Zelly video. Hope you guys enjoy. And without wasting any more time, let's start with the first story today. And I want to get this Giroud news out of the way first. Now, late last night, the transfer king himself and Fabrizio Romano came out and reported that it seems like Tomori and AC Milan is a lot closer to happening than any time before. We already know that Tomori is interested to go to Milan. We already know the club are willing to let him go too. However, one stipulation came out in regards to making this loan move happen. And that's the fact that AC Milan wants to insert an option to buy at the end of his loan spell for around 30 million euros. Now, from Milan's perspective, this makes a ton of sense. You know, we cannot forget that they've done similar things with us before when it came to the loan signing of Bakayoko. And considering Bakayoko throughout his entire loan career, it's forever been about having options to buy at the end, which never get exercised. So this is standard football business. Interesting with AC Milan though, as reported by Romano, is that their current director, who was previously at Roma, actually expressed interest to sign Samori back when he was at Roma, so it does make a lot of sense behind why Milan are showing interest to sign him now. And from Milan's perspective, if Tomori enjoys his time there, if he excels and grows, they're potentially signing a top-class defender for 30 million euros, which is around 26 million pounds. As I want to stress before I move on, this is an option to buy. This is not obligatory. And this happens every single time with every loan player we've normally let go. Now, the question is, does this contradict what Lampard said about Tomori having a long-term future at the club? Well, no, it really doesn't. When it comes to negotiations, Lampard isn't involved. That is entirely up to Marina. And considering the amount of loan players we've let go who have always had options to buy, this does not guarantee that we'd even accept selling to Mori if he was to excel in the not too distant future. The reality behind why Samori is currently the fifth choice centre back, it does make a lot of sense. Last season, he did pick up a few injuries, especially in the second half of the season. And considering the amount of competition we have in the defensive areas, ever since we signed Thiago Silva, we have to look at these four other guys and they haven't faced the same injuries that Tamori had. And considering there was no pre-season, the difficulties that COVID has brought infecting every club in football, I can easily understand how Tamori's progress might be a bit behind the others and why it's constantly this case of having to catch up all the time. So... Considering that we let Ruben loftus cleek leave in a very similar manner, I see the same thing happening with Tomori. And to be honest, I think this is a good thing. Now, I'm going to bring up some quotes made by former Chelsea player and Ole Aina. You know, he spoke about his time when he signed for Torino on loan, where I thought he had a good spell in Italy. And as you guys can see on screen, these were the quotes made by Aina himself, where he spoke about wanting to move to Serie A to improve his tactical understanding of the game, his positioning, his concentration, and of course, being able to affect the game at a high level. And considering that they've been teammates before at Hull City, considering that they're teammates at the club, they're boys, and how we all know that players speak to each other, for me, it makes a lot of sense behind why Tomori is down to sign for AC Milan on loan. Now, as I spoke about in yesterday's video about this potential transfer merry-go-round that I saw, with Simakan now being reported to have agreed personal terms with RB Leipzig, he seems destined to sign for them, which explains why AC Milan have focused their attentions on Tomori. I feel we're allowing this because we want to sign Upa Meccano in the next window. And as I said in the previous video, the player is flattered by interest and for very good reason. Not only could he potentially play alongside Kurt Zuma, boosting his international hopes due to the amount of ridiculous talent that France have in the centre-back positions, considering playing in the Premier League are a higher level compared to the Bundesliga, I feel these are ways in which Upamakana could be tantalised to sign for us, rejecting Bayern Munich, who of course are a better team, but unfortunately are the best team in a league that isn't as strong compared to the Premier League. I can see how Marina's thinking. I can see what's happening behind the scenes, you guys. 
things are looking very interesting right now and and to now move on to the second story today i want to quickly speak about olivia Giroud before focusing on the other big story today in kim in giant now reports came out from as suggesting that real madrid are now turning their attentions to olivia Giroud, who's part of a striker shortlist because now as we all know jovic has returned on loan to Eintracht frankfurt and i want to give my personal opinions on this very quickly i think one thing that really annoys me about modern day football is how clubs constantly sign players who excel playing in certain systems alongside other players that get the best out of them and they sign these guys without having any of those conditions available for the player that made them excel in the first place and is any surprise how Halle, Jovic, uh, Rebic as well they haven't reached those same heights now they aren't playing together ah uh, uh, football man but naturally with Giroud with how well he's respected how he's an international football player how he's revered naturally Madrid are gonna turn their attentions to him but here's the question now don't Giroud and Benzema have beef aren't these guys not boys I mean how does this make any sense this is fake news like come on man or maybe this might not be the case now you guys this is why I love doing news videos you guys know I'm about doing my research I'm not here to spout nothing without putting the work in and as was said by Giroud on the 6th of October last year the media have made this massive fake story about Benzman Giroud not being friends and having this beef. The comments that Giroud made about F1 and go-karting, it was clearly in jest, which was absolutely taken out of context. As Giroud has insisted for a while now, there is no beef with Benzema. He mentioned that Benzema's exile from the national team was a bit of a shame as Kareem is an impressive player. And to be honest, you guys, the quotes are on screen. I'm not gonna speak for Giroud. You guys can read it for yourself. But all I am gonna say is that this is typical of the media. And just lies in general i mean the reality is lies are a lot more entertaining than the truth but the truth i mean there's nothing more to it it's definitive you know you can't have an opinion on top of that and with the lies lies allow you to be more creative it allows you to read between the lines it allows you to exercise your creativity and allows everyone to have an opinion on something with the truth though all you can do is accept it and my conclusion to this story is that if Giroud goes again it will be down to the player himself personally the club clearly want to keep him and considering it's Real Madrid again you know you never know what's gonna happen with the story you guys but now we move on to the other massive story today reports have come out stating that Arsene Tottenham are closely looking at Kim Min Jai who is currently playing for Beijing Guan in the Chinese league he's 23 years old he's about 6'3 6'4 he is known back home in South Korea as the monster and he follows in line of many exciting South Korean prospects such as Son who is without a doubt a world class player and of course Lee Kang at Valencia as well. Kim Min Jai follows in that same league however he does not follow those same traditional stereotypes that most Asian defenders are typically known for which is that yeah they look very nice on the ball but they have no grit they got no strength no determination but with Kim Min Jai he absolutely destroys those types of stereotypes. Now you might be thinking Nini why are we being linked with a defender playing the Chinese league how can we allow Tomori to go to sign a guy that plays in a much worse league? How does this make sense, man? How are you going to waffle through this? Yeah, I've been cynical, you guys. But on a real, the reason why we're looking at a player like Kim Min Jai, as we have to know in football, there are shortlists. So with Kim, he fulfills the height requirements. He fulfills the strength, the pace. He's a very fast defender. And the most important thing out of all of these attributes is that he is a defender that kickstarts the first phase of the attack meaning that he's the guy that receives a pass from the goalkeeper. He can play between the lines. He makes the attacks happen. And this is a quality that we are desperately looking for because we need a long-term alternative to Thiago Silva. Now, for a while, he's been linked with so many clubs from across Europe, most notably Spurs, who have been linked with this player for an entire year. But my thing is though, even though he clearly has talent, he clearly has ability, does this translate to a top four level? And, and I'm constantly stressing the differences between playing at a top four level compared to playing at a different level because the pressures are different. Every single season, you've got ridiculous fan pressure. You've got ridiculous expectations from the manager, from the boards. I feel the reason why a lot of players that make the step up who aren't able to excel is due to those mental pressures. Personally, I think if you're someone like him, you would benefit more from signing for a stepping stone club to acclimatize to the league 
the different standards, the new way of playing, before thinking about a top team. One criticism that the player does have in this game, which is probably natural due to the standard of competition that he's been playing in, is that sometimes he is not proactive enough when it comes to leaving his offensive line to close down a player between the lines. And you know that is a skill that all the top defenders need to have. And it does take time to really master. But at 23 years old, looking at his raw attributes, how he plays, I mean, there is clearly a player of promise. And I guess you could cynically say, well, Nini, if we're looking at him, it's purely for commercial benefits. But, you know, I'd never agree with that. Even though back in the day, I, I stupidly said the same thing about Chris in Pulisic but I mean you guys know I'm not trying to keep my same opinions I'm trying to improve and learn everything I can about this game I mean of course we would benefit because in South Korea they absolutely love football and be tapping to a new fan base really grow that even more but this would not mean we are exclusively patronizing the player because for us and other clubs to even look at him he needs to have that ability in the first place, which he has. So it's going to be interesting to see what develops. But in my personal opinion, I do feel like he's naturally part of the shortlist when it comes to the requirements we need. Height, pace, great on the ball, kick starts the first phase and can play in a high line. So you guys on that note, I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving. Expect the match preview to come out later today. Stay tuned for that, you guys. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.